my name is Scarlett Lynn Gomez. Um, I have a degree in uh, public health, a master's in public health, as well as a PhD in epidemiology. And I study cancer epidemiology, specifically focusing on the role of social determinants of health and how it plays a part in cancer health inequities. I was motivated to pursue a career in science um, because it was kind of the expectation of my family. Um, it was one of the few acceptable career options for, um, the, to, my, to my parents. Um, but really, uh, being a first generation immigrant, um, I came to this country when I was in second grade. Um, I think it was around age eight. Um, STEM classes were actually easier for me to manage in school than, um, you know, English or science, uh, social, uh, social studies or history, liberal arts classes. So I think because, in part because of that, I gravitated towards STEM and I just always kn had known that some kind of career in science was probably the way that my career, professional career was going to go. The way that I learned about epidemiology actually was um, from an informal mentor. Um, my first job after college, I worked at a pharmaceutical company. I was an analytical chemist. In the two and a half years I worked there, we were side by side at the bench, and he would tell me stories about why he didn't complete his PhD. In fact, he took a detour in his career to work in the Peace Corps for two years, and then he extended it to four years. And he told me about the public health work that he did when he did the Peace Corps in Nepal. And that just really, the stories that he told and the, the public health issues um, from, from the job that he had as, as a Peace Corps volunteer just really resonated with me and compelled me and motivated me to look into epidemiology um, and to learn more about it. So what inspired me to study the social determinants of health is in large part because of this mentor that I had worked with um, in that first job right out of college. Um, just again, listening to all the stories that he told about the different contextual influences of health. So I did my degree, my master's degree at the University of Michigan, which does have a very strong social epidemiology program. I took a class in social epidemiology from one of the fathers of social epidemiology, I'm Dr. Sherman James, and who introduced me to the concept of the role of social determinants of health. I started to conduct health disparities research as I embarked on my career in epidemiology and began to learn more about social determinants of health and, and its impacts and realized um, as I learned more that these were really, these factors were really fundamental to studying health disparities and health inequities. And so now it's really a central focus in a lot of the work that my lab does. I found the training that I needed to become an epidemiologist really through just researching and talking to people. I learned about, you know, that there is an option to get a degree, a master's in public health. In fact, initially, I was still fairly set on becoming a doctor, getting an MD degree. And I thought, you know, I'm just going to take a little detour, get a master's in public health degree, and that will also further help me um, with having that kind of orientation when I, um, when I, embark on medical school. In fact, when I did my master's in public health, it just clicked. It was, to me, was um, a sort of light that, that sort of, you know, like that, the clouds opening saying, this is it. This is what you are meant to do. How long my training was, um, was two years um, for the master's in public health degree and about three and a half to four years for my PhD degree. Um, I understand that if one goes straight into a PhD degree without having had a master's degree, typically that length of training is, can be five to six years. So collectively, it is about a four to five year um, um, training program be between the, P the master's and the PhD. How do people finance their PhD is, is actually a great question because most PhD programs, unbeknownst to me when I was applying for PhD 
programs actually provide some means of support. Um, but often with that support, you have to become a GSRA, a graduate student research assistant, or you have to become a teaching assistant for a class. Many programs do have training grants to support pre-doctoral students or to support students who are in a PhD program. And this was the degree program, the, uh, the PhD program I was in at Stanford. Um, I was on a training program, which I highly recommend um, if students are able to negotiate that when they're applying for, for um, their PhDs, because it really gives you the most flexibility. There are also training programs that students, PhD students, with help from their, um, their mentors in the program that they can apply to from the National Institutes of Health or, or NIH and, or other funding organizations. So training is rigorous and it's challenging. Peer support is essential. And so if you can um, form for yourself a, a small but committed, you know, supportive network of students, um, of, of course, in addition to family and friends, um, the students really is critical to helping you to get through those, those bumps. Some of the other obstacles or challenges that I personally have encountered are um, just lots of imposter syndrome. For me, I have found that having a very supportive mentor um, it is helpful to um, help to mitigate some of that imposter syndrome. Persistence um, is, is key, and um, you've got to keep trying. I have several grants projects that I'm conducting right now that are funded by grants that were submitted seven times. When I did my master's in public health, um, as many public health programs, you are required to do some kind of summer internship or practicum. So I applied for multiple summer internships um, between the first and second year of my master's program and um, actually was accepted to three internships. And I thought, I'm not doing anything else this summer. I'm going to find a way to do all three internships. Um, one was at a um, independent nonprofit 503C organization called Cancer Prevention Institute of California. Um, it turned out that after I completed my master's degree, I continued to, I was able to continue to work at the Cancer Prevention Institute of California. I then applied to PhD programs, um, wanted to stay locally, so um, matriculated into the PhD program at Stanford and continue working at the Cancer Prevention Institute of California and was able to do my dissertation research through my job there. And then once I finished my PhD, I just continued, um, was promoted to become a research scientist at the Cancer Prevention Institute of California and stay there for 20 years. The thing that I find the most rewarding about my field, and this really is what keeps me going, is, is the impact that I, I feel that it has on people and everyday people, everyday lives, and reaching real people. And if it helps them to advocate for their own health, to me, that makes all the hours of grant writing, <laughs> submitting a grant seven times, getting papers rejected, um, it makes it all worth it. The most challenging aspect of my field is that probably like many other fields, it's ever evolving. The science is constantly improving and changing and but what's um, rewarding about that is that you have to constantly learn and adapt. Um, and the, I think, you know, for me, um, it's finding the time to read, to read the most updated science. For me, I would say that because it is a very dynamic field, that is probably the most challenging, but also one of the most rewarding aspects of doing this work. So advice that I might give to an aspiring epidemiologist is persistence. Um, I think this is a challenging field. Um, I think that from what I've seen, um, many people go into it, perhaps not fully understanding what's involved. Um, but I do think that it's worthwhile to take the time to learn and to talk about, to talk to um, epidemiology professionals who are applying um, epidemiology in different aspects. I would encourage people to really take the time to explore all the different options that are available out there. Yeah.